that's what I'm getting ready to tell you. Okay. All right. I'm going to let Bob do most of this, but I just want to give you a little bit of history, okay, before we start. John Justus. Now, we're talking J-U-S-T-U-S. Not related to J-U-S-T-I-C-E. No relationship. Two entirely different families. John Justus Sr. moved to this area that became Henderson County between 1800 and 1810. And he's buried out at Edneville Methodist Church and his land was out there. One of his children, one son, John Justus Jr. moved to this section in the Upward community. Now, John Justus Jr. was born 1782 and died in 1842, so you see how long ago we're talking. And he owned all thousands of acres of land that way, that way, that way, and that way, all the way into Upward. And the old Gilbert Justus Cemetery, which you can't go to because you got to cross through homes, pastures, and it's in people's backyards. <laughs> it's down there off Howard Gap Loop Road. So if you go on up there, you turn right on Howard Gap Loop, you go on down, there's another road to the right. We've got a historic cemetery sign there, but not right where it's at because we can't put it right where it's at because the neighbors would sue the county because it, you can't get to it without crossing private property. But that's where all the just us original people are buried with all their descendants which married into and lots of girls so we're talking lots and lots and lots of different surnames uh, they had nine children rachel married jacob cagle we descend through both of us descend through him rebecca married henry washington cagle susanna married greenberry taylor olive married moses heatherly ended up down in the green river community Nancy married Thomas Blackwell and ended up further up in Dana. Mary Caroline married Hiram King Jones, whose cabin we're going to see here in a little while, who we all, a bunch of us, descend from him. <laughs> uh, James T., then the boys were James T., Jesse Richardson, and William Davenport Justus. And William Davenport got the land of his daddies. We all together? because Bob's going to point to you where that original log cabin was of John Justus Jr. and William Davenport Justus. William Davenport Justus was one of the sheriffs of Henderson County toward the end of the Civil War, the last few years of the Civil War. He had two wives. Uh, he first married a, which one, Tabor? Tabor. Tabor first, had a lot of children. She died, he married a Nancy Patillo and had a lot more children. He had a total of 24 children from two wives. Was his mother a Davenport, do you know? No, no, Thomas. So, John Franklin Justus, one of those 24 children, ended up with this home place property. We all together? And then he married Julia Jones, a descendant of Hiram King Jones and Mary Caroline Justus and the sister of my grandfather, Suzanne and I's grandfather. So they built that house over there in 1906. That is the parents of Ernest Justice, one of the most important and well-known educators of the 20th century in Henderson County. Justice football field at East Henderson <coughs> High School is named for Ernest Justus who was born and raised there, and he's the father of Bob. One of the sons was Drayton Justus, who lived in that rock house. His story is written in the book From the Backs of the Oklawaha by Frank Fitzsimmons, and it talks about how a stone from every all 50 oh, states were used to build that house. Wow. So that is that house that Fitzsimmons is talking about in that book From the Backs sure of the Oklawaha. Hmm? You sure it would be 50? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> East Henderson High's football field is named the Just Us football field. Probably, yeah. One rock from all 50 states. When did they build the house? When did Drayton build that? 1948. How many states were there then? Well, he used all 50. <laughs> he got some from Alaska and Hawaii, I know, because he told me. all over Europe, too. They're, they're yeah. Right. And he had them labeled at one time. Most of it's worn off now. There's nobody in the house right now. You can 
We can walk up there and yeah. look some, and you can still see the label now. But Uncle Drayton had tried to label every one of them. Oh, now, I was, he did a lot of masonry in a lot of yeah, houses yeah. around this area. It's not just that one, right? I mean, well, he, uh, he loved River Rock, and he lived in two or three of the River Rock houses you see. Yeah, because Chris was saying that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, anyway, these are this is uh, Susan's family. Suzanne's family, Bob's family, my family. Uh, there's got to be some others over in here. I think a couple left already, and there'll be others joining us later. So there's thousands of descendants of this family in this county, thousands. I'm not exaggerating. When you're talking about 24 kids and you've got nine kids having 24 kids, you can imagine. <coughs> so that house is 1906. Now, Bob, you start and you Show them the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide <coughs> right through the property. It's, uh, I, is anybody in the, the, the cabin that John Justice Jr. had? Uh, I think I can point closer. Go ahead, go ahead. But it's across the field. It's back in the edge of those woods. Do you want to walk there? And yeah. that is the Continental Divide. Yeah, yeah we're going that, over to that the other side. So if you want pictures taken on the Continental Divide and the, the John Continental Justice Divide is running, is running this way. way. And, it hits and, Ridge Road up yeah, here, Upward and, Road, Ridge Road. That's Continental Divide. <laughs> yeah, it follows a kind of a east-west direction right here. But we can, if, if you're game to walk across the field, we'll walk over there. It, uh, it makes a little zag now because of the way they cut the interstate, but it keeps on going on the other side up that way. But there used to be an old frame house right here just in these brambles, and it sits exactly on the Continental Divide. Had a roof that was slanted this way. A drop of water hits the top. Half the drop goes into the French Broad, and half the drop goes into Green River. Which is, but uh, the frame house that was built right here was built, uh, I think, by my great-granddad, W.D., and uh, it would have been, uh, I'm not sure what year, but in the 1800s, uh, probably a little bit before Civil War time. And uh, he was born just below it. There's an old spring down here where they got the water. It goes into Green River. And there was a spring on this side that goes into the French Broad. Wow. But, uh, what was his name now? W.D. stood for what? William Davenport. William Davenport. William Davenport. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, my dad was born right here. And then he was six years old when they moved across the road. My granddad built that house. That was John Franklin. And uh, my granddad, John Franklin, was born in this house too, the same one my dad was. And uh, then uh, John, the, the first one that Jenny mentioned, John Justice Jr., uh, he moved in here from Open Clear Creek. And I think uh, it was about 188 that he moved from Clear Creek over to here. And uh, that's when he built this house. John Justice would have uh, built the first cabin that was right over there between where this house sat and the interstate and just above the spring that's, that's down there. And uh, by the way, his, uh, I, I meant to mention this to Jenny, uh, W.D.'s sister, Mary Caroline, is Hiram King Jones's wife. She would have been born uh, in the cabin that was right there. So uh, the one that we'll be talking about down in Big Hungry, she was born right over there. And uh, what else can I tell you about it? The interstate kind of destroyed a beautiful farm. If you don't have access, uh, it does a lot of damage to your property. If you've got access, you're rich because you've got business potential. But uh, does the spring still have water in it? Just a trickle. Uh, mm -hmm. Something changed when they graded the road and all of the things. That, it's just a trickle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It wouldn't be enough now, I don't think, for city to survive on. But, that was a but as you're coming out around the inner. Uh, connector, 25 connector, and you're making that little loop. If you keep your eye to the right, there's just a little depression there. That's the spring drainage that comes out right there. What can I tell you? Well, I was wondering, have you ever gone in there with the building detectors 
see what type of artifacts you can find from the area. I'm going to bet. Uh, I know there was one spot back there that there was a, you know how folks used to dump their trash in their garden? Yes, sir. Gold mine. It, it's probably a gold mine. I don't know. <laughs> well, Old bottles. I've never done it. No. Mm -hmm. No. But uh, anyway, the yard's a mess, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's where it was. Got some healthy briars. And it, it, you know, most folks, when you tell them you're on the Continental Divide here, they think, well, now isn't that a little higher over there? Well, it is, but it's draining that way and going that way. And it, it runs right up this, the, whatever the, the highest point, right? So what kind of, kind of animals, animals, what husbandry did you do back then? Uh, what kind of animals did you raise? Well, uh, you know, they were just small-time farmers like uh, most of the folks around here, and they had all kinds of animals. They had uh, sheep, hogs, cattle, a lot of fruit trees, oh, yeah. uh, truck gardening. Uh, so, you know, just uh, self-sufficient yeah. in every way. Awesome. Do you know of the tie to the Davenport family? I mean, it's just curious that his middle name would be Davenport. And, I don't know. I wondered where that came yeah, from. Yeah, that was Samuel's stepson was John Davenport, the first one here. Okay. Yeah. Maybe some connection. That's what I'm figuring, yeah. yeah. A lot of times they'll be named for, you know, the maiden name of the mother, but Jenny said her name was Thomas. Yeah. So, yeah. still a tie back there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure where that came yeah. from. It was like Uncle... Drayton. I often wondered where grandmother came up with that name. Uh, you know, there's mm -hmm. the Drayton plantation now in South Carolina. Right, Drayton probably a connection the somewhere. Drayton mm -hmm. pasture connected with St. John's. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess she thought, oh, that's a nice name. Could be. Mm -hmm. Bob, do you remember the house that was here? The house that was here, yes. My dad tore it down. Uh, oh, about the middle 70s. It was really in dilapidated condition. We stored hay in it, and, uh, but it was just a little uh, kind of an exaggerated two-room, two-level, and W.D. raised 24 kids in that. Now, they all weren't in there at the same time. So some were grown and gone. But uh, one thing I remember about it uh, as a kid, uh, just playing in and around, uh, upstairs where most of them would have slept it, it was not sealed in inside it was just the uh, you know the stud it was a frame house but just the studs and then the outside overlapping uh, siding and you could see right through it and my dad talked about it as a little kid uh, before they, when they moved from here over there uh, that uh, when it would be a hard blowing snow it would blow right through in on them <laughs> where they were sleeping. So, not many of us experienced that. How many fireplaces are there? Wood, wood pot stove? Yeah, there were two. There was one on each end. And yeah, then uh, they added a little kitchen later. There was a little kind of a kitchen thing on the back side. And it just had like a flute pipe, mm. you know, wood stove and a flute pipe. Did you make the foundation left behind? My dad took all of the foundation, the steps, the mantel rock, and everything, and it's part of that house over there now. He did some remodeling, and it's uh, uh, one of the well, things he took was the, the big mantel rock. That was quite a oh, yeah. job getting that. Sure. Uh, and, uh, but uh, he, that house was not underpinned before my dad moved over there. He moved over there in retirement. Uh, my grandparents were gone, and my aunt that inherited it from them she was gone and he bought it then and so he used a lot of that rock to underpin that house that's over there but it was the, the pier, it was just up on piers do you have an old photo of it my chance yes I do. good good uh, i haven't dug them out in quite a while yeah. okay. glad you do but i don't have any picture of you know the cabin that preceded that right and uh, the only thing i know about it is i would ask my dad where you know where they lived before that and he said well it was right over there somewhere and he you know there were no stones or no foundation or anything so. did everybody have chores they had to do or how that work oh yeah um, I, I had, you know having a big family in those days was an advantage because mm -hmm. you had a big work our little children had to have to yeah. be younger and yeah well does your family still own any of this is yeah my brother open? and sister and i still own that house and part of this field over here uh, cousin, uh, Uncle Drayton's son, who
who lives in Montana owns this rock house yeah. and, uh, and part of this field. And then uh, another uncle, his two grandsons, that house you see uh, over yeah. there. Yeah. And then there's there's actually two more houses over there. There's one well, in the woods behind the White House, and then there's a little brick house up there. Bob, from, from right here, point the direction the Continental Divide goes. Well, it, it, this is just about Kind of see how this rise is? Yes. Uh -huh. Went right across here. Okay. It's just, just kind of like this. All right. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. You'd have to be out here with a surveying instrument mm -hmm. to really pick sure. the high point. Because it, you know, it, it, you know, if you're standing. But you do right get here, a sense like to it, the to the right. It rolls to the right. Yeah. Yeah. And to the left, kind of yeah. it rolls to the left. Like yeah. So everything to the left side goes to yeah. the French Broad River. And, and everything to the, the right Green side River. goes to yeah. the Green River, Green right. River. to the yeah. Atlantic Ocean. All this yeah. used to wash right down through here, mm -hmm. and, and there was a, the interstate changed a lot. Sure, oh yeah. And, uh, but anyway, it went right down and goes down in the Green River. Right on the Green River. And everything on the other side goes to the French Broad, yeah. to the Tennessee, to the Mississippi, yeah. to right. the Gulf of Mexico. Gulf of Mexico. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And the other thing, this is called Crest Road now. Well, years ago, it had no name. And Uncle Drayton, who worked at the post office, uh, when they were naming something, he, he's the one that named this Crest Road. And it's called Crest Road because it's the crest, crest of the... the uh, crest of the ridge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because so, of the Continental Divide. Yeah. That's, that's a great story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that.